So today then, at the beginning, we'll focus on adding our own custom fonts to our apps. Now this, because we have a project that is web-based, it's a website living inside of an Android shell, uh, it can follow the same uh, rules and technology that we have for modern websites, specifically when dealing with fonts. Nowadays, we go to various websites and maybe don't really pay too much attention, but those of us that have been doing web design and working in technology in a while remember that for a long time, typography on the web was very limited. Even though you might have 200 fonts installed on your computer, on the web, maybe it was just Arial and Times New Roman and Verdana, very simple kinds of fonts. Perhaps more and more you're seeing fonts that are interesting looking, that really have a, a style to them. And that took a while to, to develop, and the answer to it was CSS, specifically CSS3. So we're going to be able to apply the same thing to our, to our project, because it's a web project. We're going to be able to give our own fonts, give it our own fonts via CSS3. So also what would happen in the old days is that if you wanted to do something like this, OK, this is a this line and these two lines over here, generically, that kind of text, these three lines of text, you would call that a sans serif font. And it's kind of small, but over here, the, the 1914 to 2014, that is uh, the opposite, which would be a serif font. And what is meant by the serifs are the little ornaments, the ornamentation <coughs> on a font. OK, so compare that font. Like I said, it's really small. I'll show other examples. But compared to that, the, the, the one in here, it's not just a line. It's got, the, um, it's got some ornamentation of it. It's most obvious, like in Times New Roman and compared to Arial. These don't have the extra ornamentation. So you've probably seen fonts that have like a little a little base, and then maybe a little flick right here on the P, and then maybe a little, a little bit extra ornamentation on the C. If they've got the ornamentation, it's a serif font, because the serifs are the little ornaments. So sans serif, uh, French for not, I guess, without serifs, that's what these are right here. In a sense, this text in the middle is sort of a sans serif, but it's a different kind of sans serif in that it's more ornamental. So on the college's homepage here, I mostly see sans serif fonts. It might be Arial, it might be Verdana, it might be any number of fonts, specific fonts, but the font family, the font style, is a sans serif. Um, in the old days, if you wanted to do something like that, you would make it a picture which in this case it is because it needs to be part of a banner. This is a picture. Nowadays, we, we would be able to make any of our regular text sp look special with some CSS. And in the old days, that was a problem because what would happen was that the website assumed that that special font was also on your computer. So the web designer back in the day would set this font is going to be up here Chiller, and this one down here is going to be Onyx, because I've got it installed on my computer. But then when you visited my website and you didn't have Onyx, it looked plain. It didn't look like Onyx or Chiller. CSS3 solved that. So here's how we'll take advantage of that. Let's go to this website called fontsquirrel.com. Fontsquirrel.com. There's many, many websites out there where you can get fonts. But there's less websites out there that you can get for free, fonts for free. And even less that you can get them for commercial purposes. So again, you have to think, just because I can download and use that picture doesn't mean that I can, or that I should, that is. 
Did I pay a copyright fee for it? Do I have a license for it? Um, same thing with fonts. There are fonts that cost $2,000. So just fonts, just words. You know, in completely intangible things. But they have a value of $2,000 because, again, someone designed it. Some company owns the license to it. So a website like fontsquirrel.com, 100% free for commercial use. That's what we want. Even if we're not going to sell our app, it's better to go to a source that we know we're, we're, we're protected at. This is not going to have a thousand and one uh, fonts like 1001freefonts.com. Uh, there you can find a bunch of fonts also. I'm just bringing it to your attention. I don't recommend you use these fonts though because these are the ones that are definitely set up for free for commercial use. There could be some here. There could be some not. It's The onus then is on you to know is the font that I'm using okay to use. And to allay those fears, I'm going to say go here because these fonts are the ones that are safe to use, especially for commercial purposes. So we get previews of them right here. Um, we get them organized on the right side. Like maybe show me some uh, some uh, grunge types of fonts or monospaced or novelty fonts. I want to look at novelty. So I have all of these types of fonts. That one looks familiar. And um, we are able to download them and use them for our projects. If you click on a font, Look at Nexa Rust. It will then show you various examples with different words and sizes. It could come with different families. There's Nexa Rust, Nexa Rust Sans Black, Nexa Rust Script Light, double zero. Take a moment to browse around a bit and make a note of a couple of interesting fonts, and then we'll talk about how to use them in our project. Now, before we go much further, we have a, a couple little limitations. Um, the way that it was derived to be able to use any font is by using the um, by using the CSS3 property at font face. Uh, so there's a Wikipedia article about it, perhaps, at font face, maybe not. And there's a little section 
on the web typography. Uh, so web fonts. The, the thing that has happened is that uh, there was, of course, uh, early on in the web, there was Netscape, and there was Internet Explorer, and Safari, and Chrome, and Firefox. There was a bunch of web browsers, and each one wanted to do things their own way, their own specifications, even though the W3 said, uh, this is the specification, but everyone did it a little bit different. There's been a CSS rule that's been out for a while called the at font face rule. And this allowed for you, in theory, to display any font on a website. But different browsers interpreted it, that code differently, and some even ignored it. So for a long time, that rule was around, but no one really adhered to it. Now with the advent of Web 2.0, HTML5, CSS3, um, many more browsers, if not pretty much all modern browsers, now can adhere to it. So that's why now you browse different websites and you don't really think much about it. That's an interesting font, like this up here. And it's probably running in the background using the at font face CSS rule. Would it pick that up from the inspector? Would it show us the. Uh... It would. Yep. Yeah. If you poke around a little bit in the inspector, you'll definitely, you'll definitely be able to see that. So, what different different things that happened? Uh, font the font format. Um, there's about three different, three or four different font formats. You know how there's graphics formats: JPEG, GIF, and PNG. Uh, there's a few of them out there, and in order for this to fully work, uh, we should specify that this works on all the possibilities. What's cool is that. Font Squirrel will do that for us. There's a lot of technical stuff happening in the background. Font, uh, font Squirrel will do it for us. Like that, showing the proper font to the proper device or the proper web browser. So perhaps one line of code in my PhoneGap project would look would show the font on my Android device. But it, that same line of code wouldn't show it on an iPhone. And it wouldn't show it on a, on a Windows phone. So Font Squirrel does the guesswork, takes the guesswork out of it for us by writing all the proper code for us, and then we'll apply it as necessary. The caveat, though, is that we need to browse Font Squirrel specifically for fonts in the web font um, families. So let's do this. Wherever you are, let's turn on the web font filter on the right side. And let's say I wanted to use, I wouldn't recommend it, but let's say we wanted to use that font for our project, 3DOM. Um, if you click on a font, not the download button, but if you click on a font and it shows you the details of the font, you should have then at the top a row of tabs, specimens, where you can see what all the letters look like to get a good preview. You can go to test drive or you can say, okay, let me put my own name here, my SDCE. So I can get a preview of what it looks like before I download it. I can look at the glyphs, which are all of the characters in the font. So perhaps you found the perfect font but it doesn't have the accented uppercase E which you need, which you really need. So you might want to check the glyphs. And then the license, you know, you can not, usually they're not that complicated. And uh, this one says, by downloading and or installing a tension type free font, you agree to this. This font is free to use in any and all your personal and commercial work. There might be some that say the, the, this font is, is free for you to use for any personal non-commercial work. Again, since I'm directing you to Font Squirrel, you should be safe, but always take a quick look there. A donation is much appreciated, but not necessary. Donations may be through PayPal, and there's their email. No donation is too small. Uh, so if you do decide to use the font, maybe chip in a little bit to the author for, for designing it, designing your perfect font. And then what we want is the WebKit font tab. Not all fonts have this. 
but we want the web kit, the web font kit bundle, which is what this is. This fonts license appears to allow the use of at font face CSS embedding. That's what we want. We want to embed the font via CSS on our project, and this one does have that. That's why I said um, you might save yourself some anguish by first turning on the web font filter and browsing those, because you might be browsing the desktop ones, you find the perfect font, and it doesn't have the ability to be, to be used as a web font. So then we've got, um, which subset do you want? Subsetting reduces the number of glyphs in the font to make a smaller file. If the font supports a particular language, it will appear in the menu. Uh, so we could say, you know, if there's subsets that only have the letters A through Z, and that's all you need, and then the font is 10 kilobytes. If it was the full subset, maybe it's 100 kilobytes. So it's an extra 100 kilobytes in your app that you don't really need. And this is where we choose, and it's chosen it for us, the possibilities of displaying your, your font properly on the different devices. So notice here, TTF format works in most browsers except Internet Explorer and the iPhone. EOT, only for Internet Explorer. WAF, compressed, an emerging standard. Hopefully one day we won't need five standards, we'll just use WAF. And SVG for iPhones and iPad. So this is why this was always a problem throughout the years of, of web design, because there's different computer operating systems, there's different web browsers, different standards. This technique here will cover all bases. This is perfect for web fonts and for our app as well. So let's download an actual font that you do want to use for your project. Again, you're not going to find the millions of fonts that you would with a Google search, but this is where you're going to be safer actually using the font. So you have to think about how is the font going to be used. When I look at my project on my device, the sans serif font built into to, uh, jQuery Mobile looks pretty readable in different sizes. So even though you have the ability to use something like Alex Brush, you, think, you have to think, is it going to be used on a small device where it's going to be hard to read? So for the moment, I would recommend, once we learn this technique, you can then use any fonts you want. I would recommend choosing some kind of font that is, you know, kind of uh, easy to read. You know, this one that's anagram, I like it, but when it's down to my phone size, all those little extra serifs, I suppose, are going to get lost. So I'm going to see how it goes with America. I might regret it, but we can change it. So I'm going to say I want America. You need to click on whatever font you like, go to the Web Font Kit tab, and select Download the At Font Face Kit a moment to browse around and then download the at font face kit So let's say you downloaded it. It went to the desktop. It's a zip file because it's got a bunch of um, separate files. Uh, so I'm going to, from the desktop, you can right click, extract all. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And this is where a lot of people are going to differ because your particular font might come with extra fonts that you might not need. So you have to take a look at your own zip file. Mine says, how to use web fonts. I'm going to open that and take a quick look. 
installing web fonts, upload your web fonts, include the web font style sheet, modify your style sheet. Okay, so depending on your on your font, here's how mine looks like. It's got the how to use, that's a good reference, and then the, the license, and then I, I don't know what that is there, AM Erica text. Let's see what that is. Uh, just like some person's musings. And then in, I've got a folder called web fonts, and in there I've got three styles of, of the font. America alternatives, regular, and sans regular. It looks like then I've also got the name of the font with, an, with a demo HTML file, which will give me a preview of the particular font. So if I look at that one. So that's what that one looks like. the one called America Alternatives. That one's regular. And that one is sans regular. So from what I downloaded, I have three options, and I'm going to go with uh, America Sans Regular. I like that one. So what's in that particular folder for me, and most likely for you, is a it's it's a uh, it's a demo file, and then specimen files which relate to it. So these two, I don't really need them for this to work. I do need this style sheet because this has the code written for us and then the four possibilities to display the font properly on the device. So what I'm going to do is you can either copy the folder Make sure it's the folder that contains the actual fonts. TTF, SVG, EOT, WAF, style sheet. I'm going to copy that folder into, uh, into Eclipse in a moment. But to save yourself a little bit of a few bytes and such, it doesn't seem uh, you do, you're not going to need the demo file and the specimen file because the demo file uses those specimen, specimen files and we don't need them ourselves. I'm going to delete that. And so the font that I'm going to use is that one there. And also to make it easier on myself, I'm going to call it font. So all of the font is going to live in a font folder. And then I'm going to copy that font to my project. And then we'll connect it all up inside of Eclipse. I'm going to load Eclipse. And I'm going to drag it from my desktop into my WW folder. make sure to copy everything. So make sure you've done that. If, if you're not quite sure, call me over because um, we want to make sure that your font is in Eclipse. Can you yes. expand that? Just want to make sure I'm clear. Like this or yeah. zoom out? 
No, that's fine. That's fine, okay.
All right, everyone, so it looks like our font is in our project. And uh, it, it, it came with a style sheet in there. So what we need to do is uh, point to make our index and any file that wants to use these fonts, we also connect that style sheet. That'll be the first step. That'll activate the use of these 
web fonts. Then we apply the font to an H1 or a P tag or whatever. So let's open the index.html file. And then we will um, go up on line 11 and 12. We've got the references to the style sheets. We're going to add a reference then to our new font style sheet. And I think, let's see, we'll probably add it before Codica since that's the customized one. Uh, so let's make a new line above line 12. And we'll write the tag here to make a link. And remember, this is one of the one that does not have a pair, so simply write link, and then rel style sheet, just like the line above, one word, href, and then in these quotes, we're going to make a link to that style, style sheet CSS. So it's inside of a folder font. Therefore, our code will say font slash style sheet dot CSS. And so now our index file would be aware of our style sheet file in that folder. Yes? It might, uh, it might not matter, but remember, Kodika is the one that we call last. So we would, uh, that would be further customization. Uh, so it might not matter which of the two it's, it's at, but I feel that let's, we define this, the font first, and then we can change it in Kodika if we want it. I don't think so, but let me take a quick look. That's a good that's a good point. That's why we might put it afterward. Let's take a quick look. We've got um, text align and background. Nope, I don't think we put anything regarding font families in there. Perhaps font sizes and such, but not actual font families. All right, so looking at that again, this is what you should have. Now, those URLs, are they relative to the style sheet then? They are. So if we look inside of the style sheet CSS file, these are definitions of how to use the fonts. They're all listed here. And these are relative to the style file. So we've got the whole font folder, all of the fonts, and the style sheet that defines it. So the style sheet can access it. So that's what this is saying. This style sheet is saying we're going to define We're going to define the um, the at font face property, specifically a font called America Sans. In my case, America underscore Sans regular. And in order to use it, the source of it, and it goes through this cascade. Um, access the definition of that font inside of this dot eot file. If that doesn't work, then we could try the EOT version with the Internet Explorer fix uh, with a format. If that doesn't work, we can use the WAF format. If that doesn't work, we can use the TTF format. If that doesn't work, we can use the SVG version. Mm -hmm. Font weight normal, font style normal. So then this is the cascade. One of these should work on the device. So step one is that we 
Step one is that we, uh, well, step one was that we downloaded the file. Step two is that we linked this style sheet. And step three will be that we say, for example, put in, uh, put this font to my heading one. Let me just confirm here. We've got that. We've got that. Now in the example, that's what the, the file that said how to use this, that's what it was telling us. Uh, you want the add font face definition somewhere, we've got that. We've got a link to the CSS file, we've got that. And then modify your own style sheet. To take advantage of your new fonts, you must tell your style sheet to use them. Look at the original add fa font face declaration above and find the property called font family. The name linked there will be what you use to reference the font. Prepend that font name to the font stack in the font family property inside your selector. So notice the example. If we wanted to use that special font, we have a P tag, font family, the name of the font, comma, and then the other ones. So let's say we wanted to do that on our own project. Let's open up our Kodika ext CSS file. Let's see, do we have any H1s in here? See, there's an H2 there. I'm going to try it over here first, and then we can uh, refine it. Uh, let's go to your CSS file. And at the very end, we might have to be more detailed, but we'll see. At the very end, we'll say H1. Open curly brace, close curly brace. Font dash family colon. And here's where then you need to see your style sheet to see what internally or how internally your font is called. So let's write this and then I'll show you what I mean. H1 font dash family. If I go back to my style sheet, it says that I need to use this name, in quotes, because I use the America Sans Regular. This will work for me. If you use something else, whatever yours says on line two there, that's what you want with the, the, uh, the single quotes. Are the quotes required because we're using this font-based technology? Because uh, obviously there are examples uh, where we had, uh, you know, Verdana or whatever else did not use that. Yes, uh, that comes over from uh, from web design in that uh, names of fonts uh, that are already known um, don't have that. And notice the sans serif as well. But this one, because it's this unique font, needs it. So also that's there because sometimes a font has a space in the name that could cause problems. So if we've got it in quotes, that takes care of the spaces. Now I believe we, if you save this and run it, then hopefully we see what we're hoping for. I'm going to load it up in the, in the Eclipse web browser and see if I can see it that way. I can. There we go. So save all of your work and then try running it on your virtual or real device and see if you see this cool new font. Or you can do a quick test within Eclipse. Remember by going to the index file, right click, open with web browser, and cancel all those pop-ups that appear, or else you'll crash, or else you'll crash um, Eclipse.
There we go. I'm running it on my virtual device. And I see my America font. Yes. On, on our um, CSS where, where we identify the property as H1, mm -hmm. if we had just put an asterisk there, then all text in, throughout our website would just be this new font? It would, but I don't recommend that because sometimes a font won't look good as as body text. This is like display text or headline text, and this is body text, right? Uh, you know, wherever we've got the body text, mm -hmm. like right here, that should be as plain as possible and as most readable. Uh, just for fun, I did put it on asterisk, and let's see what it looks like, but I don't recommend it. See that? Okay, that looks that looks nice there, but then uh, that might not be as easy to read, especially if you've got a big crazy font. Now notice it didn't it ignored it in my buttons because that's other, you know, uh, jQuery mobile stuff possibly conflicting, overwriting. overwriting. Uh, so actually, it doesn't look so bad as I thought it would. But uh, yeah, that's a trick. If you guys want to try this just for fun, instead of it saying H1, put an asterisk. And that'll apply to everything. And it may actually possibly look good. Mine, I'm, I'm a little surprised it did. Um, so you could, you could download multiple fonts and use certain fonts for your H1 and yes. different fonts for your body. Totally. Well, then applying it to everything doesn't apply to everything. That's true, because of the buttons and such that, yeah. that are further controlled by other CSS. So setting it to asterisk kind of looks OK, but that's my particular font. <laughs> Yeah, you would have to put a span around it and then specify a different font face because, yeah, but depending on the font, you might get just a little square. Uh, so, yeah. You have words. I have, like, very fancy words. Perhaps this, perhaps this font doesn't display it. It just says, something wander That's probably the person, the designer's little copyright notice or their little, you know, graffiti tag. So we can look at it during the break, but you'll have to add a span and specify only that, or maybe add a class and say, and use that to turn it back to Arial and just to that one element. All right, cool. Raise your hand if it worked. Good, we'll take a break in just a moment. Question? Yeah, on the, on the example on the, on the website, where they, they have the key mm -hmm. statement and they have the font family. And then after the, they have comma Arial, comma Sans, what are those extra parameters? In classic web design, when we were doing this, again, we would try to first use the font that we choose. Okay, guys? We would try to use the font that we chose. If for some reason that fails, second choice is Arial. If for some reason Arial is not available, third choice, sans serif, which is just any generic sans serif font that the device has built in. So in theory, you know, it might be a good idea to use this anyway, just in case whatever happens to our font, it doesn't properly load up so that we have some control. You know, we can go in and do the same thing. We'll say whatever your font is, comma, the commas after the quotes. This is not like a regular English. The comma is after the single quote, mm -hmm. and then Arial, capital A, and then sans dash serif. 
So that way it's first choice, second choice, third choice, if all else fails. All right, so if it worked, great. Let's take a break. If it didn't, I'll answer some questions. Um, we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes. It's just about 7.40. We'll be back at 7.50, and we'll go on.